The week six waiver wire is very important. We have a batch of running backs that could turn things around for your team. They're very ambiguous, but it's better than what we've seen. The wide receiver pool is a little tricky, but it's a little deeper and has some upside to it. So this batch off the waiver wire is very good for fantasy football right now. And one running back a lot of people are looking at right now is Jalen Right, we're going to deep dive him today. We did it earlier in the season. We got to do it again. Things are changing. And a lot of people are wondering what to do with Jalen Wright. He was a big stash going into the year. But the Dolphins have been weird due to Tua being out with their offense. And now we got to see what to do with this running back. Before we do this deep dive, you need to click that subscribe button right now. Now, because we're doing these deep dives every day, we're doing multiple players a day, as many as possible. We're using these videos to help you set your lineups. At the end of the week, click that button. Stop missing out. Ric Flair's watching you, and you don't want to disappoint Ric Flair. Jalen Wright, though, might be in line for some more opportunities. Achen's out with a concussion, but the Dolphins are on by this week. Achen should be back. He should be back getting the workload. But the thing is, Wright is starting to get more workload, and he's starting to get more opportunities. He's starting to seize those moments, and we're also seeing that speed on the field. That's why the Dolphins drafted him. So when they plug him in, they can still rock that speed at the running back position. And the thing about Jalen Wright, this is a very layered situation for the Dolphins. Very layered situation for his prospect portfolio. But we're starting to get some touches. We're starting to get some opportunity. And the coaching staff there has to know that they got to start mixing up the running backs a little bit more or their running backs are going to be out. Got to start playing their players with a little bit less work and start mixing them in or things are going to get banged up even worse. When a running back runs for 1,000 yards in the SEC level, that's something you got to look at. 4.35 yards after contact per attempt. 82 yards was his longest rush. 83 yards the year prior. This guy can scoop. This guy can be productive. And you saw that at the combine. 438 40-yard dash. Elite burst score, he blew up the combine. He was one of the big talks after the combine due to what he did. The thing about him though, you see statistically he's comp to Miles Sanders. He's got some likenesses to that. However, we can hit 22.2 miles per hour on the field. Miles Sanders could never do that. Not many players in the National Football League could do that. And you're looking at the fastest ball carriers through the first five weeks of the season, 22.15 for Brian Thomas. Saying that number's off a little bit, he'd still probably be top 10 or 12 if you had to like reduce it down a bit to make it more real. That being said, he's fast. He can blaze it. But his weaknesses, comparable to Miles Sanders in some points, indecisive, doesn't trust his eyes, not efficient mover, can't chain together moves to make guys miss, but he's got speed to burn in an offense that's fast paced, that uses their running backs that is known for using their running backs in key spots, that is already getting hit by Devin H. And this is a running back that does not need a full workload. Maybe eight, nine, 10 touches a game, and he just needs to pop one. That being said, we got Raheem Mostert too. He's a good veteran. He gets hurt off and on as well. Jalen Wright was a huge stash going into this season. And because of that speed, because of the draft capital, because of him being an ambiguous rookie, you stash those players to see what happens. Then Tua got hurt. That hurt us. That hurt them. We feel for Tua. I feel for Tua. But it really impacted the offense, slowed things down here for these running backs and everybody else like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle in the offense. Devin A. Chain's been getting a lot of work. He should be. He's a very good running back. He's got a lot of upside on any given carry. The thing about this, they got to use more running backs. Or Devin A. Chain will get hurt more. He's got a concussion. He got hurt last year twice. That could happen more. Jalen Wright was drafted due to that. And he's got thickness. He's got speed. And Raheem Mostert's good. He's a good, dependable running back for the NFL level. But they also need some youth. They need that injected. And you're looking at the yardage totals. Jalen Wright's second on the team. He's just sneaking up there. 139 rushing yards on the season. 4.8 yards per carry in four games. And when he sees daylight, he's dangerous. Just like Devin Achen. He's got more power, more speed to him. He'll run through that arm tackle instantly compared to Devin H and he'll do the same because he builds up so much kinetic energy I don't want to say anything about about Devin H and so I'm not going to go too far in there because I like him that much I respect him but Jalen Wright's a little bit different and Devin H and a little bit more complete for the passing game more complete for space 
But Jalen Wright's like that rocket you got back there that goes straight. And if there's an alleyway, it's over with. It's over with. And look at the miles per hour on here. He's hitting 15 miles per hour consistently on his runs. He's got a 20 mile an hour run last week. He's hitting 10 plus miles an hour consistently. Not many carries. About half of them are getting registered here. That is a lot compared to a lot of other running backs. That's top tier efficiency wise for speed per touch. If that was a thing compared to other running backs. That's something to note. That impacts his upside because he can house it on any given run. So I look at this more like a Keaton Mitchell effect, more like a Will Fuller effect, where there's going to be games where he does nothing, nothing if he's getting touches, if he's getting work. But then there'll be that random game where he spikes, and you're going to want that spike, and it's going to be off and on because he's sharing touches. We're weird right now at the quarterback position. These matchups are weird. But that's what we're going to see from Jalen Wright going forward is him getting a little bit more work, Probably getting eight, nine, ten touches a game, some more, some less. And he's just gonna be a rocket that there's gonna be some weeks where he hits. And there's gonna be some weeks where he does nothing. Because we're not getting a lot of use in the passing game. The offense is weird, everything's weird, he's sharing the backfield. But that rocket, if that gets an alleyway, that's gonna hit for you. We saw that with Keith Mitchell last year, and that's what we're looking at. And some people will look at that, the peaks, the valleys, and call it a bust. But other people look at it and say they love it. And they'll love it. And yards after contact per attempt right now, 3.38. 98 on the season. 11 missed tackles. That speed kills. That speed hurts defenses. And honestly, it's about seeing that one crease. These matchups don't matter. It's about seeing that one crease. And if he finds it, he gets it. He gets the opportunity even. It's over. It's over. You got fantasy points. And that's it for Jalen Wright. And you're looking at the bye weeks. A running back like this might be getting more run, even with those 8 to 10 carries a game. If you're decimated, you're injured, and you got these bye weeks to look at, you might need a running back like this stashed anyways. You might have to throw him in week 10, 11, especially weeks 12 and 14. And you might be getting more run then anyways, because they got to see what they have in them. That's what they got to do. They got to see what they have in them, so they roll in the next year and strategize what they got to do for 2025. But you don't need to stash. You got other running backs. I've talked about stashes all year long. You got Blake Corn, you got somebody else, you're good to go. You got Jonathan Brooks, other guys on your roster has to be used for the lineups. You're waiting for them. And I understand this is a suggestion. This is not a must add, but you need the upside. You're looking for that. He's getting touches. You're going to see what happens. You like something I said in this video. You like the 4-3 speed. You like the Keaton Mitchell effect. You like that upside on any given touch. I understand that, and it's just a stash play, and there's some upside to be had here that could hit, that could not hit, but again, we went over the good, the bad, the ugly. You make your decision. Let me know what you're doing in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. One day for watching, catch you on the next video.